Okay, so in this video, we're going to have a look at a problem solving style question involving coordinates. So if you want to have a go at this question, feel free to pause the video and have a go. But otherwise, before we get started, I'm just going to show you where you can go about finding more topics involved within this video from right inside the video. So when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description, you'll see that I've got everything listed within there. I've got hard questions to try, I've got checklists and practice papers that you can download, and other questions and other videos within this series. Now if you scroll down to the bottom of the description, you'll see down there it says topics featured in this video. So in there I'll put all the links with difficult questions and topic videos related to this topic right there for you to access. So just click onto one of those and it will take you on to more practice questions and different versions of this topic. So with that being said, let's get started. is made from four identical rectangles and we can see them there on the coordinate grid. The sides of the rectangles are parallel to the axes and then it tells us the coordinate of point A and B which we can see on the diagram and it says that point C is also marked which we can also see. Work out the coordinates of C and you must show all your working. So for this question here obviously we've not got the grid lines drawn on our coordinate grid. So we can't just count along, we need to actually figure out what's the length and width of each of these rectangles. And we can do that by having a look at the distances between A and B. Now if we look at the horizontal distance from A to B, so we are going from the coordinate 3 to 11. So from 3 to 11, what's that distance across? Our distance across we can work out by doing 11 take away 3 and 11 take away 3 gives us a distance of 8. Now let's have a look at our vertical distance. So that goes from 4 up to 20. So that vertical distance there that's going from 4 up to 20 that is going to be 20 take away 4 which is 16. So there's our distance. Now, this isn't a midpoint question, so we're not looking at the midpoint of A and B. We're going to have to try and find out where C is. So we know the distance between them. Let's have a look at, in terms of the rectangles, how far it is between them. So if we have a look from A then, to get across to C, that goes one rectangle across. But how far does it go across to B? So if we go up, we've got another rectangle following on from that, but that goes just past B. So how are we going to figure out that distance there and how are we going to solve this problem because we don't know how long the rectangle is and it has a length of eight between them but we can't just incorporate that as two rectangles so we're going to have to incorporate some unknown lengths let's call the length of the rectangle x and let's call the height of the rectangle y and you can use any letters you want there you could use l for length and w for the width completely up to you but in terms of moving from A to B, that's one X down the bottom there, another X going across here, and then we would have to take away the Y just there. So let's put that as we're going across X, across X, and take away a Y. So that's almost as if I was going to draw it on. Let's just get rid of that and we'll draw this on. It's like we've gone across one length, across another X, but then we're going back a y in order to get to that point b. So if I was to write that using algebra, I could say that that is 2x take away y, and that has to have the length 8. So 2x take away y has to have the length 8. Now I should hopefully be able to incorporate that same method, but moving upwards, so going from that coordinate of 4 up to the coordinate of 20. So to do that, we've gone up a y, just there. We go up another length, so that's an x. And then we go up another x there. So there's no taking away. We just go up the width, up the length, and up another length. So that would be two of the x's again. So 2x, but this time we add y. So 2x add y, and that equals that distance 
16. So there we go. So all we've done, we've just said in that first statement, to get from three to 11, we'd have to do two x's and then take away a y. In the second statement, to get from the four to the 20, we've done two x's and a y, and that has to equal 16. So what we actually have there is two simultaneous equations. And if we've been able to construct simultaneous equations, then we're definitely gonna be able to solve this. And it's gonna be a lot easier to solve than we might think because the coefficients of y are already the same. We have different signs. One has a minus, one has a plus. So that means we add our equations together. So if we add them together, 2x and 2x is 4x. Then negative y and plus y cancel each other out. And the 18 and the 16 make 24. So that's a nice equation to solve now. We can do dividing by 4 to get our value of x. So x will equal 6. So there we go. We now know the value of x, which in the case of our question is the length of the rectangle. Okay, so we have now found the length of the rectangle just there, which is the x. So we're going to be able to use that to find that coordinate c, because we know to get to c, I've got to go across one length. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. Before we do that, we also want to find the value of y. And we can do that using either of these equations. I'm going to use the top one, just because that's the one I wrote first, but you can use the bottom one too. So that 2x would now become 12, so as x is 6. So that'd be 12, take away y, and that has to equal eight. Now you can see quite logically there that that y value is gonna to have to be four, isn't it? 12 take away four is equal to eight. But we could solve equations by doing this, we'd get negative y equals, when we take away 12, we get a negative four. And if negative y is equal to negative four, then positive y is equal to positive four. And there we go, we have our y value as well. So there we go, that's our y value. So if we highlight that, and now we have everything we need in order to get to point C. So to get to point C, in terms of the x coordinate, we go three on the x coordinate just here, and we're gonna add the x the x value there, the value of six. So for the x coordinate, we're gonna do three plus six, which is equal to nine, and that's for our x coordinate. For the y coordinate, it's gonna go from four and it goes up by one of the y's, so that goes up by another four. So that'd be four plus four, and that is equal to eight. So therefore, our coordinate for C would be nine, eight. And there we go, that would be our final answer, and we've done that by using simultaneous equations. So there you go, when you have questions like this using coordinates, you just have to sometimes think a little bit differently. Think about the sort of distances of the shapes between them and how you can break that apart. If there is a lot of unknowns and you have an X and a Y, that's when you have to involve simultaneous equations. But of course, if there's only one unknown, let's say they're squares rather than rectangles, then you could just use one unknown and you'd, just do, and you'd solve that by just using a normal single equation. So there we go, there is the answer to that question. Hope you found that useful and helpful. Don't forget to check into the description for more videos in this series. And if you did find that enjoyable and helpful, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.